it's April the 16th, 2024, and today I want to talk about what I did in order to stop drinking. And I want to start off today's video by just giving a quick disclaimer. I am not a doctor, I'm not affiliated with any healthcare professionals, I'm not affiliated with any healthcare facilities, anything like that. I'm just a normal guy who is an alcoholic himself, who has stopped drinking, and I've got almost two years under my belt. May 16th of this year will be, be my two year anniversary. Um, so let's just hop into it. So what made me stop drinking to begin with? Well, I went on, I guess, basically about two decades of drinking and one decade of basically just the most ridiculous amount of drinking that anybody can do. I mean, I was drinking uh, a handle of vodka every two days, plus beer and plus little shooters. And that was every day. I started in the morning and I would drink all day. Um, now I did work. Uh, and I didn't drink really, really heavy during the day, you know, while I was at work, but I would have a drink or so while I was there, maybe two, three. I mean, you know, I would drink all day long. Um, but it really got bad after I got off. <clears throat> I would basically drink myself into oblivion every single night until I blacked out, didn't know what was going on, couldn't remember anything the night before, and I woke up every single morning with the most excruciating hangover, and I would vomit every single day. Every single day when I woke up, I was so nauseous that I would throw up. And what ended up happening is May uh, the 16th of 2022, I woke up and threw up as normal, but this time I started throwing up black coffee grinds. And a few days later, I ended up in the hospital. Um, found out that I had pancreatitis, uh, had internal bleeding, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so I got out of the hospital. That's, I spent two weeks in the hospital, and when I got out, I told myself, that's it. I, I, I am not drinking anymore. That is it for me. Um, I'd spent enough time uh, dealing with that. And when I went to the hospital, the doctor looked at me when I was in the emergency room and he said, you have so much going on with you right now. I don't know if we're gonna be able to save your life, but we're gonna try our best. Well, they did. And after I got out of the hospital, um, a, for about a, a week after that, uh, you know, I spent a week just kind of laying in the bed, trying to recoup, get better. And I went back to work. Um, so that was in at the end of May, beginning of June, June, July, August, at the end of September. So four months later, right as I hit my four month, uh, four months of sobriety, um, I ended up getting sick again one day when I was on a job. Ended up back in the hospital again with pancreatitis. I was throwing up blood, blood this time, like red blood. And uh, two more weeks in the hospital up there, ended up getting ascites and all this stuff, found out that I had cirrhosis. Um, uh, then I found out I had blood clots in my portal vein, my splenic vein, and my spleen, and blood clots in my liver, uh, varices all over my organs and my esophagus and my stomach. I mean, just, I found out I had diabetes the first time I got sick. I mean, there were just so many things. When I went to the hospital, my blood sugar was 1100. And, <clears throat> My point is, is that after I got out of the hospital the first time, I told myself, that's it, I'm not drinking anymore. And one of the one things I want to just say, to preface this, is I think that sometimes that, um, you know, I've been talking about this now for a few months. I started this channel back in March of last year, uh, but I just made one video and I forgot about it. I didn't see that my video had gotten 27,000 views until Thanksgiving Day of last year. And that's when I really started back on the channel, started doing the videos daily. Um, but there's this idea, I think, that since I got sick, that it was easier for me. And that's not the case. Um, you know, one of the things is when I went to my GI doctor one time, I was laying there on the table. He wanted me to go to a counselor, go to AA, do some kind of like extended help. And I told him I just didn't need that. And he said, well... You're an odd case then, because 90% of my patients that come in here, uh, they end up continuing to drink. He said they'll lay right here on this examination table, get up and leave, and go get a 12-pack on the way home. So, just because I got sick didn't make it any easier. If anything, it made me want to drink more because I had so much stress. I was so worried about everything. I didn't feel well. Um, I just felt bad. And, you know, more than anything, I was, you know, just depressed. Uh, when I left the hospital um, after my, my stint in there at the end of September, they told me I had a year left to live. And 
it was one, you know, the thought went through my head, well, why don't I just drink until I die? You know, why am I going to sit here and, uh, you know, not drink and deal with all this heartache and, you know, all these tough times when I could just fix it by having a drink? But I told myself I didn't want to go back down that road again. I finally realized that I wanted to be here. And it took that slap in the face for me finally to realize I actually really did want to live and I wanted to be here for myself and I wanted to be here for my wife and my kids and I just made it my goal and my mission to not go back to it so today I want to talk about what I did <clears throat> and the methods I used in order to stop drinking um, once again, I'm not giving any advice today. I'm just telling you guys my journey, what I did to stop, and things that helped me to get through it. So, the first thing that I did uh, in order to quit was, like I said, I made up my mind. Um, I finally realized that I did love myself, and I had, to, I had to finally realize that, that I did love me, and I wanted to be here. Um, you know, that was something that I was confused about for a very long time. I didn't know if I wanted to be here anymore. I think that's one of the reasons I drank the way that I did, because I just think, I didn't, I didn't know if I really did care. Um, but after that initial thought of, I want to be here, I love me, and I want to continue to be on this planet, and I knew that if I continued to drink, I mean, they were very blunt with me in the hospital the first time I was there. They told me, you drink again, you're not going to be here any longer. So I made up my mind and uh, said I got to do what I have to do in order to stop. So I just want to talk about things that I did today that helped me out and things that made me feel better. Uh, just things that made it a little bit easier for me not to drink anymore. Um, one of the first things I had to do was I had to start living in the moment. And I've been talking about this a lot lately, but I had to stop living in the past and stop trying to live in the future. The past is already gone. The future isn't even here yet. We have now, and that's it. And I had to focus on that. I had to focus on right this second, right now. Where am I at? What's going on right now? I'm not going to drink today. I'm not going to drink right this second. And at the very beginning, it was breaking everything down into small increments. I didn't want to think about I'm never going to drink ever again. It, in the very beginning, it was I'm not going to drink for the next hour. And then it was the next hour, and then it became, well, I'm not going to drink for this morning. And then it was, I'm not going to drink this morning, and then I'm not going to drink this afternoon. And then as that got a little bit easier, it got to, well, I'm not going to drink today. And I still, to this day, I'm not going to drink today. I don't think about so far into the future. Am I going to drink later on in the future? I don't know. I don't plan on it, but I don't know for sure. I don't know what, what lies in front of me, and I'm not going to worry about that. All I can worry about is right now. And that's one of the biggest things I had to focus on was living in the moment and living in the present. Um, I also had to start setting up uh, goals for myself and um, systems. Uh, one of the first things that I started doing after I got sick the first time was um, I, I started getting these systems in place. Every single day I would wake up in the morning and start making my bed. and cleaning my room up that didn't allow me to get back and lay in the bed all, all day long and waste my time um, I got up uh, you know I, t I told my wife I want to start making the coffee every single day um, and you know, a lot of this stuff really started after the second time I got sick um, these systems that I put into place uh, because I was struggling so hard I was bedridden for about three months and when I finally was able to get up uh, I made myself do it, and I started putting these systems in place. Like, I told my wife, I'm going to be the one that makes the coffee in the morning. We have a French press, so I had to grind the beans and boil the water and pour it in the French press and all that kind of stuff. But I did that every single day. I got up and made the bed every single day. As tough as it was for me to do, I did it. I, I, and I did it every single day, and it made it where I just couldn't go lay back down. The bed was already made. The room was already made up. Why am I going to lay back down, you know, get up, brush my teeth, wash my face? and get started with my day. Every single day, I got one of these out, and I started a list of things, that, of, of projects that I wanted to get done, just things that I wanted to get done for that day. It didn't necessarily have to be anything really big, but I just had to have systems in place for myself. 
and I start a list. You know, it could be just, uh, you know, fix that window screen that's been hanging off, or um, clean the trash can today, or uh, today's the day we're going to clean the oven, or I just want to vacuum today. And I never gave myself really big goals. I did, it was just a lot of very small goals, but I just wanted to have goals in place, and I didn't have to have them all done that day. Whatever I didn't get done that day, I, I would scratch through the things I did and the things that didn't got added to the list the next day and I would slowly whittle them down until I got those things done. Another thing that I had to do was I had to keep my mind occupied. Uh, a huge one for me. Um, if I found myself just sitting around, uh, giving myself time to think, I would start thinking about alcohol or thinking about old things I used to do. Or I would start thinking about the fact that I was sick. And I didn't want to do that. So I made sure that I kept my mind as occupied as possible. Um, there was never really a moment where I just had time to just sit around and start thinking about too much. Uh, even if I was doing something real simple, like a very mundane task, like doing the dishes. Um, I have earphones in my ear, and I would be listening to an audiobook or a podcast. Uh, it's constantly trying to learn something um, and it's something that I d I've done for years I I've always tried to push myself to learn a couple things every single day at least a couple of things every day uh, I, I put that practice in years ago where I would just get on my phone and just look something up that I didn't know and I would just think of something random and it could be you know wire buttons made or whatever it is and I would try to learn something but I really started delving deeper into those things um, after I'd gotten sick and you know listen to stuff all the time self-help books uh, you know it could be a book about uh, how space shuttles are made or whatever it is I just wanted to learn and keep my mind as busy as possible um, I did a lot of reading. Um, reading is one of those things that I found to be really therapeutic for a couple of reasons. One is, when you're reading a book, uh, you really have to pay attention. As you're reading the words line by line, you're sitting there and you're having to imagine the story that's happening. You have to imagine the characters in the story. There's just so many things that are going on in the book, and as you're reading and as you're thinking, you're not sitting there thinking about, when am I going to be able to get my next drink? You really focused on it and I would sit down to read a book and next thing I know five six hours had gone away and I would be like wow um, I can't believe that already that much time has already elapsed and it helped me out tremendously because like I said I was trying to live in the day and break up my day so I would say to myself I'm not gonna drink this morning I would you know do a couple things that morning get a book out read for a while next thing you know it's three or four o'clock in the afternoon well now I've already made it through the afternoon now all I gotta do is just make it through that night if I can make it through that whole day without drinking then tomorrow's a new day and then I can just worry about that and that's what I did I tried to fill my time up as much as I could to get through each part of that day each day part and just make it through that day and then I could wake up the next day and start over fresh again I didn't focus on the fact that I'm never gonna drink again forever I just thought about that day and like I said in the very beginning I broke it up in small sections um, I made sure that I started eating better <clears throat> um, one of the things that comes along with AUD is uh, you know we don't eat properly um, for a lot of different reasons um, one uh, you know you don't want to have a belly full of food when you're trying to get intoxicated because it's, you know you're you're just fighting an uphill battle if you do that and another thing too is that um, you know, when we're drinking, it destroys all of our, uh, um, you know, our, the, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing my, uh, my name here, but you, you, you lose all the good bacteria in your stomach, um, and you can't process things properly, you're not getting the proper nutrients, you're putting a lot of stress load on your liver, which does, your liver has 500 functions, um, which I didn't know until all this happened, but your liver has 500 function. It plays such a huge role in, uh, you know, getting the proper nutrients and vitamins in our body, you know, extracting that and getting them dispersed, uh, filtering our blood, just so many things, getting the toxins out of our body. There are just so many things that come along with it, and our livers are put under a lot of stress. Um, our, uh, like I said, our, our gut bacteria is thrown off. Um, you know, the alcohol causes so many problems. Uh, 
it, it, you're just not getting the proper nutrients and stuff. So I started eating better. Um, I was trying to eat as much, you know, uh, nutrient dense food as possible, organic vegetables, organic fruits, uh, lean meats. Um, I started eating as much protein as I could. Um, <clears throat> you know, protein is one of those things that's very, very important for a couple of reasons. Um, one is your liver needs protein in order to regenerate, and it takes a lot. Um, two, uh, after I'd gotten the ascites and spoke with a nutritionist, um, found out that the protein uh, helps keep the ascites away, or it helps get rid of the, I've got gnats flying all over me. I'm sorry, guys. But um, it helps keep the ascites away as well. So I started eating a lot of protein, drinking protein shakes. Um, and I still do to this day. I drink three protein drinks a day. Uh, and then I eat a, a, you know raw protein. Um, I eat a lot of vegetable protein, beans, and stuff like that. Um, I just started trying to eat better. And I also start, started taking vitamins every single day. I found out that I was uh, vitamin D deficient, vitamin B deficient. Um, you know, I was talking about this in a video not too long ago, but a lot of people uh, with AUD are uh, vitamin B deficient, and those B vitamins play a huge role in our body as far as our metabolism and our energy levels and all that kind of good stuff, our mental cognition. Um, so we need those. And, um, you know, I just found a vitamin pack that worked for me. I take a, uh, it's a, I think it's made by Nature Made. It's a diabetic uh, vitamin pack that I take every single day, and it's supposed to help with uh, regulating your blood sugar, but it's got magnesium, uh, chromium, a multivitamin, fish oil, and then a couple of other things in there. And um, after I started taking my vitamins every single day, it, didn't, it wasn't overnight. It didn't, I didn't start feeling great the next day, but after some time, I started feeling a little bit better. My energy level started to increase. Um, I started drinking black coffee. Um, those that that really helped out a lot um, and uh, black coffee is good for your liver as well um, you know you don't want to drink 20 cups of it every single day but you know the a little bit of caffeine in the black coffee is good um, I started trying to stay as busy as I could with my family um, I was doing things with them all the time uh, every single weekend I would tell my wife we have to go do something and we were always gone doing things I didn't want to sit at home I uh, just twiddling my thumbs because I knew that if I just stayed at home, I was going to think about the alcohol again. So I wanted to stay as busy as possible. And I had lost a lot of time with my family, um, you know, with my consumption. Because if there wasn't alcohol involved, I didn't go. So I really wanted to spend as much time with my family as I could, try to get back some of that time with them. So I stayed as busy as I could with them. And uh, that helped out a lot. Um, I started trying to get as much sleep as possible. Um, sleep plays a huge role in, uh, in so many parts of our life, um, in our mood, uh, in, you know, just in our body being able to rejuvenate itself the next day. Um, I didn't sleep well when I was a drinker, and I needed to start getting better sleep, and I knew that I had a lot of health problems too, so uh, I knew that sleep played a huge role in that, in, in, in recouping uh, my health. Uh, so I started trying to go to bed at a decent time every single night, turn the TV off, didn't pick up my phone anymore, and just lay down. Um, one of the things I found that worked for me really well was chamomile tea. I tried a lot of different things, um, but chamomile tea is one of those things that really helped me get some decent sleep at night. It just helped me just calm down at the end of the day. Uh, now, I did uh, start off using just one bag of chamomile tea at night and then started using two. I just found that two bags just worked better for me. Um, but I was drinking chamomile tea every single night. I still drink chamomile tea. Not every single night. On nights where I'm just struggling to get some sleep. Um, if I'm still a little bit wired when I lay down. And I do every night. I lay down about 8 o'clock and I go to bed. Um, I'm usually asleep by 8, 30, 9 o'clock every single night. I make sure I go to bed at a decent time. Now, I get up early every single day, but I go to bed early. I want to make sure that I'm getting a decent amount of sleep every single night. Um, another thing that I had, too, was I dealt with RLS really bad at the beginning. Um, hot baths helped me out tremendously. Uh, another thing they helped me out with as well is that when I got the ascites, it caused a lot of pain in my lower back. Um, I, it just caused a lot of pain in my ribs. Um, I broke a lot of my ribs when I was younger, doing a lot of stupid stuff. 
And when the ascites got set in and it started putting all that pressure on my rib cage, it was causing me a lot of pain. And just getting in the hot bath, soaking in there, helped me out tremendously. Um, another thing that I did as well too is I tried taking CBD, I tried taking ashwagandha, valerian root, um, none of that stuff worked for me. I didn't care for any of it. Uh, the one thing that I did find that helped me out, and I don't take it often, uh, just whenever I'm having like, uh, you know, I have to go to the doctor and I've got to, ha you know, they're going to tell me some results or some tests or something I'm going to have and I'm a little bit stressed out. Um, I got those uh, stress gummies. They're made by that brand, Ollie. Uh, they have lemon balm in them, um, L-theanine, and uh, GABA, I think is what's in it. And um, I found those to, they work. Uh, not the greatest in the world, um, but I do find myself to be a little bit more calm when I take those. Um, and I still do. Every once in a while, I'll take them. Um, I don't take them, like I said, every single day. It's just only when I have like a really stressful something coming up um, that I'll take those. But those work for me. Um, I'm not saying that those other ones I tried wouldn't work for you. They just didn't work for me. Uh, the CBD, um, it just made me really, really tired. I didn't care for it. The same with the valerian root. It made me so sleepy. Um, <clears throat> I just couldn't. I, I, I couldn't handle it. It, it really made, and it made me feel really groggy the next day. Another thing I tried to was melatonin. That same uh, effect next day, I just felt hung over. Um, super groggy, groggy, didn't feel well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I've already talked about eating better. I stayed home a lot. Uh, if there was something going on, you know, we were out doing something, yeah, we would leave. Uh, but I just didn't go out running around town anymore. Um, I just didn't want to put myself out there. Uh, and there was a, a time there for a while, too, that I refused to go to the store. I just wouldn't go. I didn't want to walk in. I didn't want to get triggered. I didn't want to see the alcohol. I just stayed at home. My wife did all the shopping. I told her what I needed. I gave her a list, and she knew. I told her why I wanted to stay home. I just didn't want to go see all the alcohol. I didn't go places where people were drinking. Um, I just spent a lot of time at the house, unless I was with my family. I knew I was safe if I was with my family. I knew I wouldn't slip up and drink if I was with them. Um, but as far as going out by myself and being places, especially places where I used to drink in the past, I definitely would not go there. Um, I just stayed home. I knew I was safe at home. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to slip up. Um, and there was a time there, too, at the very beginning where I would give my wife my keys and, I, and she would leave to go to work. <clears throat> and I would tell her, just take, just, or she would hide them from me. I would t give her my keys and tell her to hide them so I couldn't leave anywhere for the day. I just didn't want to leave the house, um, you know, if I was home for that day. Now that I was still working, uh, after the first time that I got sick, I worked uh, that four months and very, very hard. Um, I poured myself into my work for quite some time because I wanted to stay as busy as I could. I also wanted to um, exert as much energy as I could so that when I came home, I was just physically drained. And there wasn't any thought of doing anything else. I would work, come straight home, and just chill out as soon as I got to the house. A lot of times I would take my clothes off, take a quick shower, and I would just sit on the couch or lay in the bed and just watch TV for the rest of the afternoon because I didn't want to do anything that was going to make me think about drinking again. Um, I, 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 all my old habits, I had to just put those to the wayside. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time sitting on my back porch. I stopped sitting out there. Um, I would sit out there and smoke and drink all afternoon. I still to this day, I don't sit on my back porch very often. And if I do, I'm, you know, I might be out there with my wife for a little bit, just talking or something. But that's a place where I used to drink all the time. I got, a, I got rid of all the places I used to drink. And I don't do them anymore. And I still to this day, I don't. Um, another thing that I did as well is I started drinking those sparkling waters. The bubbly waters, uh, any of the carbonated waters that have like that little bit of uh, flavor to them. But they're not like really, really powerful. Um, they have no calories, uh, but any time that I would get that feeling like I wanted a cold beer, I used to take those things with me in a cooler. I had them on ice all the time. I'd keep like three or four of them with me at any time. And if I got that feeling like I wanted a, a beer, because I, I drank liquor, but I also drank beer. I drank beer most, most of the time when I was like doing yard work or something around the farm or whatever. Um, 
And I found that those sparkling waters uh, or those carbonated water drinks, um, when, I, when I really had that craving for a beer, I would crack one of those and chug it down and you get that like burning bubble sensation in the back of your throat and it almost kind of tastes like beer a little bit. Um, they just helped me out tremendously. It helped fill that gap for me. And um, then on top of it, I was filling my belly full of water, uh, full of fluid. Uh, so I didn't have that like empty feeling in my stomach that I wanted to fill in with alcohol. Um, but they just helped me tremendously. I really, really uh, found those carbonated drinks to be such a lifesaver for me. Um, talked about, I read a lot. Um, but those are, you know, those are basically the things that I did uh, to, to keep my mind busy, um, to not go down the same path that I had gone down before. Um, I had to, excuse me, I had to really dig deep, um, and figure out, uh, the reasons that I drank. Uh, that was another big one for me. I needed to know why I was consuming the alcohol. For so many years, I never took the time to sit in my emotions. I never took the time to figure out the root causes of anything. Everything I ever did was a quick fix with the alcohol, and it was a mask, it was a cover. I never ever had to sit in anything and deal with it or try to figure out a solution to a problem. My solution to every problem was, I'm just gonna get drunk. And now, and still to this day, I try to figure out what the problem is. And, um, you know, if I'm having a bad day, well, why am I having a bad day today? Uh, why am I in a bad mood? Um, let me figure that out, and maybe I can address that. And maybe once I address that problem, that might solve it, and I won't have to think about drinking again. Um, that played a huge role in it. Um, journaling. Um, I journaled a lot. Uh, every day. You know, not only would I write down my list of all the things I wanted to get done for that day, but I also wrote down how I felt that day. Um, uh, I think journaling is, uh, is a great tool to have. Um, gives you an outlet to write down your problems. They're there for you to go back and look at. Especially if you start feeling like you did a particular day, you can go back to that journal and kind of look at it. And, and maybe you can start piecing things together and figure out, well, why did I feel that way that day and why am I feeling that way again this day? Um, I found journaling to be really therapeutic. Um, especially doing this channel uh, has been huge for me. Um, but I think one of the most important things that I did in the very beginning when I stopped was, uh, like I said, and this isn't my idea, uh, you know, there are a lot of... Um, different groups out there who use this, but just, you know, day by day. And in the very beginning, it was minute by minute, or second by second, and then it became minute by minute, and then it became hour to hour, and then it became day parts, and then it became each day. And I still, to this day, uh, I'm not gonna drink for today. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I don't think about, I'm never gonna drink again for the rest of my life. Um, although I don't plan on ever drinking again, and I don't want to ever drink again, but I just don't know, and I'm not going to tell myself that. Um, I just have to live in the moment and live in the day. Um, I, and any problems that I have, anything that stresses me out, I just go ahead and handle it, and I have to deal with it. I used to drink every single problem that I had away, and now I have to actually handle my problems. If something goes wrong, I deal with it. And another thing too is I had to start understanding that there are things that are outside of my control. Um, I just talked about it in yesterday's video, but there are so many things in our life that are outside of our control. And we cannot let those things get us. They, we can't let those become an excuse to fall back into our old patterns again. Um, you know, something like a tornado coming through or a bad storm or, uh, you know, your car breaking down like I talked about yesterday these are things that we can't control things are gonna happen and you have to accept that I had to accept that and I had to you know start understanding that problems happen and they need to get addressed I let so much stuff pile up through the years um, that after I finally got sober 
I had so much stuff I had to catch up on. Things had been broken for years, things I had never taken the time to fix. I had a thing in my Jeep, uh, it's called an air blender. And basically what it does is when you turn the, the AC on or the heat on, you got that little dial right there where you can push the buttons and change the temperature. What the air blender does is it blends the cold and the hot air together. Um, and every time I would turn my Jeep on, it would click. It would go da 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 like that. It did that. I've had that Jeep for years. It did that noise for years and years and years and years. And I bought the piece for it off of Amazon, told myself I was going to fix it. I never took the time to do it. I didn't get that fixed until about six months ago when I finally got, you know, got to it to fix it. It took me five minutes to fix it. I put it off for years. I could have done it. But I didn't because I was always intoxicated or either hung over and I just felt bad. And I put off so many things in my life. Now I don't do that anymore. If something breaks, I address it immediately or the next day or within that week. I don't let things just keep piling up on me. Yeah, some days it gets stressful because I got so much stuff I'm trying to get done. But at the same time, I don't let that stuff pile up anymore. I just go ahead and get it fixed. It's done, and then I just can move on until something else breaks or something else needs to be repaired. And then I take care of it, but I don't let stuff pile up anymore. I've stayed as busy as I possibly can. I keep my mind occupied as much as I possibly can. I've tried eating better, tried sleeping better, and just tried to get myself as healthy as I possibly can. And with, that, with, with getting your body back to homeostasis, you just start feeling better. You get those endorphin levels back up, um, and that's another thing too. Uh, one of the biggest things that I started doing was just doing a little bit of exercise, going for walks. Um, if I started feeling like I wanted a drink, I went for a walk. And then I would walk until I couldn't walk anymore, then I would come back. And then I would be physically tired. And I'd walk that off. I'm not thinking about it any longer. I get back to the house and I lay down and I'm pooped. I don't want to do anything else. And the last thing I want to do is have a drink at that point then. I've got, I walked it away. I walked off the thought of the drinking. Um, and I still do to this day. If I'm feeling well enough, I'll get up and walk around. Um, I can't do any like heavy lifting or anything like that. I've got too many other issues. Um, but I can walk. And the doctor told me that's what I need to do. And it's helped me tremendously. Um, especially, you know, when I start getting that really just that itchy feeling, like I just, I have to get up and drink, I would just go ahead and go for a walk. Um, there's days where I'll just start getting really irritated uh, because it's bothering me. Um, I can't get the thought out of my brain. I go for a walk, uh, throw on my earphones, listen to a podcast or music or something, and just kind of just meditate a little bit, I guess, is what I'm doing as I'm walking. Um, I come back home and I feel better. And... Uh, that's helped me tremendously as well, uh, getting out and doing some exercise. Um, and just wanting to be here and finally realizing that I loved me. I think that was probably the biggest thing that I had to do because so many times in the past I tried quitting for other people and it never worked. I had to finally want to do it for myself. And when I finally wanted to do it for myself is when I finally became successful. I have quit and relapsed hundreds of times. I told myself every single night when I went to bed that I would not drink tomorrow morning. And every single day when I woke up, I did it again. And I did it again. And I did it again. Every single day. And you know what they say about insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what I was doing. I was living in insanity. I kept doing the same thing every day, expecting different results, but I wasn't trying to solve the real problem. And the real problem was the fact that I was drinking, you know, I was drinking myself to the point where I ended up, you know, almost lost my life because of it. And when I finally decided that I loved me and I wanted to be here and I wanted to be here for my family and I wanted to be here for myself, is when I was finally able to get the courage up enough to actually follow through and not go back to it again. And guys, I know it's not easy. It's actually very hard to do. But I can promise you that if I can do it, you can do it. I never thought it would be possible, ever. I didn't think I could do it. I was so far deep down in that bottle, I just did not see a way out. But I finally got myself out of it. And... <clears throat> I'm not saying these things are going to work for you. 
because everybody's body is different and everybody is different you know what works for me might not work for you and what works for you might not work for me you got to find what works for you you know some of these things might work for you but i definitely believe that loving yourself really doing it for yourself and keeping your mind as occupied as possible i think those are two of the biggest things that you can do and really trying to get yourself back healthy again because if you just if you feel bad um you know one of the things that i used to do every single day was when i was hung over i would have that hair of the dog because it made me feel better and until you start to feel better uh that alcohol is going to keep coming up in your brain making you think if i just have that drink i'm going to feel better today and it's not um you're just going to get stuck back in that cycle again it just keeps going like this over and over and over again you just can't get out it's a rat race um so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you found something in today's video that might be able to help you out. Maybe you can add to your regimen. I don't know. I just wanted to talk about what I did. Like I said, this isn't advice. It's just the things that I did for myself. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, you know, the vitamins are a very important one. Um, very, very important. Um, if anything, um, I will say this, um, if you've been a drinker for a very long time, um, please go get some blood work done. Um, if anything, have them take, just take a look at your liver levels, see what that looks like. Uh, you know, a simple blood test, they can determine a lot. And, um, you know, one, uh, you might be deficient in some vitamins, uh, that you might not even know about. And just getting your body back to where it needs to be with those vitamin levels can really improve uh, your health and the way that you feel and if you're feeling better you have more energy you're gonna be more successful in your journey um, you're gonna have more energy you're just gonna feel better you're gonna be in a better mood and it, you're just gonna be more successful and not just that but one of the most important things too is that there are you know if if you have your blood work done um, they might be able to detect that maybe you do have fatty liver but fatty liver can be reversed it's not permanent you can turn it around the liver is the only organ that regenerates in our body. It's the only one. It's one of the most important organs that we have, and it's the only one that can regenerate itself. And if all if all you have going on right now is just fatty liver, that can be reversed. It's when you get to cirrhosis that it cannot. And if you catch it early enough and you realize that you might have that, it's not the end of the world. You can turn it around, but you need to catch it early enough to know. And uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, for one, quitting alcohol and, uh, you know, sugar intake and things like that. Start eating healthier, um, drinking more water. Uh, you can turn that around and get your liver back to healthy liver again. Um, but you got to catch it early. I know it's scary. I know it's something that you don't want to do, but you can turn it around. Trust me when I tell you, that one doctor's visit might save you a thousand doctor's visits. And I'm living proof of that. Because I never went to the doctor. I never would go. I wouldn't do it. And my decision not to go to the doctor has, has caused me to have hundreds of doctor's visits at this point now. And I could have just went, caught it early enough, and saved myself all the money, all the time, all the stress, and all the things that I've had to deal with, all the procedures... Guys, I just want to see you guys not have to deal with what I'm going through. I just want to help. And I hope that today's video did. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I love you guys so much. I really, really, actually really do love you all. And um, this is the best community in the world. You guys are so nice, so kind, so compassionate. I'm so grateful to have each and every single one of you here with me on this journey. I couldn't be more grateful for it. So, guys, I hope you've had a great day today. I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here for today. These gnats are about to drive me crazy. And uh, until tomorrow's video, I will see you all then. Bye-bye.